My name is Rolf Laterach. I work currently for RadTech Finland as an Agile coach, a safe program consultant for global customers around the world. And yes, happy to be here and to tell about PI planning challenges. Well, I think uh, one of the most important things is really to, to stick to the basics. For example, there's a lot of material available already from Scale Agile. For example, the Art Readiness uh, spreadsheet. So have a look on those spreadsheet, check those points and probably go it through with your LACE, Lean Agile Center of Excellence. And you might also need to adapt that as well. So it doesn't always fit. So every organization has a little bit its own flavors. So you have to do some adaptation work there. Get as much information as possible beforehand and be a little bit paranoid probably because there might be still enough room for unknown unknowns during your first PI planning. So I think when you go to the first PI planning, I think uh, technical infrastructure, video conferencing, camera, everything related to that it just should work. So please check it beforehand, one day or two days before already. In my first PI planning, I had people in India, in Finland and so on. I had to actually use a camera that uh, showed our boards and my, myself as well. And afterwards, I was thinking that it would have been great to have somebody there who could have used the camera instead of me. And I was a little bit overwhelmed, so you still have enough work just to facilitate the event. So please be prepared for that. Another point is the backlog. I think it's a very crucial point that your backlog is in a really good shape when you go to your first PI planning and you have probably an unexperienced team there. So please check that as an SBC or as an RT that the backlog is really in a, in a sufficient shape and uh, you might also establish a definition of ready beforehand which is a little bit more strict than for experienced team. You might put a little bit more upfront work later on when the team is more experienced you can uh, probably reduce some of this upfront work and have a little bit more just-in-time planning. Another a little bit more drastic measure would be to, for example, have shorter PI length. So that will reduce you actually the batch sizes you have to plan and also accelerate you the learning cycles. So I tried that out with one team. Instead of 10 weeks, we did five weeks. With the time then we could again go to the normal, to the ordinary length of 10 weeks. So I think this, this might be a good measure you might be able to try out as well. I have still one point also, which in my opinion is very important, participation of the executives and also the business owners, for example, that they should be really aware about their new role. Uh, many of them might be, but they're also like people that are really, for them it's a really big jump to, to come from a top-down leader, manager, and then to suddenly be in the position of a servant leader. I had one example when we had a confidence voting and one guy of, of the train showed a two and he was then heavily criticized by, by one of the, of the leaders actually. And that has had quite a bad impact on the whole train. So people were actually walking out of the, of the event. And that should not happen. So your role as an RT, SBC, uh, helping to, to, to get people prepared for the first PI planning is really also to coach the management team, the leaders and so on. So that such things are not happening at, and they are aware of their role they have. System team. System team has always an interesting role in an Agile release train and it is actually can be very crucial uh, that the train really succeeds to, to build the continuous delivery pipeline, helping in the end-to-end -end testing, integration stuff and so on. In my PI planning, in my first one actually, they were a little bit lost. So they were actually in the event and they were not connected to the development teams and so on and then 
they came to me and asked, okay, what is actually my role? And now afterwards I learned that I actually have to, to put a certain uh, special eye on the system team to really coach them, also establish the backlog beforehand, help them to connect with the development team, also um, explaining what their role is and that really brings at the end benefit. You might also think about what kind of people you have in the team and in which mode they work. Do they work in a Kanban mode, in a Scrum mode, or, or what is the best mode they work in? So those are all things you have to consider when you establish a system teams and when it should bring actually the best possible benefit for the Agile release train.